Right, time for more vlogging from the bootcamp prep. We've been busy all day. John's on the camera. Justin's cutting behind me. First task we're tackling, on camera anyway, is, we've done loads of things already today, is we're gonna be making bacage. You know how you say it, John? Yep. Bacage, right? So this is some of the resin stuff here that Jerry brought up, which is cool. I mean, let me put that over here. The idea is that these hedges are so high that you know, tanks can't be seen and stuff behind it. Real pain in Normandy, weren't they John? Yep. Right. But, as much as, like, as much as we appreciate Jerry bringing up loads, we need even more to cover all these tables. So today we've been looking at coming up with a way of making bacage. So, there's Jerry's resin stuff. And here's what we've been making. Isn't that cool? Let me get another tank in beside that. Without killing this turret. There we go. Right, now the thing about Bacage, John, you've been telling me quite a few times it needs to be pretty tall. Right, so to gain some extra height on that, two things. So you'll see how it's made in a minute, but it's on its own base. You can put that up against height against the road. But if you look down here, you can see wee gaps and stuff. Hold it up high. There you go. Look at all those wee gaps and things. So two things that you can do. Well, two things to, that will be alleviated at the same time. Look at that. If you just lift it up and set it on there, you won't have any gaps and it probably look Nicer, I think it looks nicer. Plus you get the extra, what, two or three mil of the road to raise it up even more. Because we don't want to have to spend too much time building something that's too tall. Whoop. Although, already, look at that. That's pretty good. Right, and then the other cool thing is, with this stuff, unlike resin, like you can't really break that up to go around corners and stuff. If you want to take that around the corner, you're cutting and getting on. It's not great to be cutting resin and stuff. Watch this. Justin, can I have that big pair of snippers? Yeah. Right, so we've got a nice straight bit here, but then we come to a corner. What are we gonna do with the corner? Well, I'm gonna put that over there, and then eyeball over roughly what else I need. And I'm gonna do that. Ta-da! And we're around the corner. Sweet as, John. Sweet as. So what we're going to do is, because we've got lots of roads and stuff like this, with curves and stuff like that, we'll probably not do all these extreme curvy sections because I don't think we want bacage everywhere. But instead of going around table after table going, oh we need this, we need this, we need this, we're just going to make lengths of it. Bring the length over like I just did and go, oh I need a corner there, cut it. Oh another straight, I need to go to a corner there, cut it. And then we'll just end up with like a lot of modular hedges and stuff at the end of it, which will be sweet. All right. Justin, let's see if we can get on the camera how this is done. Yeah. Right, first step is, oh, you've got it. <laughs> Justin, Justin's drawn loads of lines on one of the tiles. This is the self-adhesive stuff. Oh, you've cut some of that as well. Yes. Right. So first step is what, Justin? So first step, we mark it just width of the ruler. Yeah. Which is giving us this nice overhang for the package itself. Well, we'll come to that in a sec. What do you see? Yeah. Now we line it up. And just yeah. run it with a blade. Now, right, I, I'm going to grab a fresh blade. No, no, it's fine. We've okay. done this. All right. right. So we've pre-cut loads of strips of this yeah. stuff, right? But one of the things is you don't need to cut all the way through this, which is what I want to show folks. Yeah. Whenever you have your cut done halfway through, just bend it up and your blade runs right through the other side and you get a nice edge on there. Ta-da! Right. We have them pre-cut. Can I get, can I just move you out of the yeah, way yeah. for a sec? I'll just take right. If you've been watching us here on, on tabletop slash Beast of War for a while, you will know that we have a box. In fact, I have the box right here. A box full of hedges that we've made using um, doormats. So the stuff looks like that. You know those doormats that you get, your front door, clean your feet, obviously. You just take it and you cut it into long strips and you'll come up with something like that. You can then take that and spray that with greens and stuff. And you'll get a pretty good, pretty good hedge, you know, if we're going along the sides of roads and stuff like that. But we're going to go hedge 2.0, bocage edition, right? So we're going to take what we had before. Let me get a nice bit that I like the look of. Oh, that's, yeah, this bit, this bit, this is the one. I like the look of this, right? All you do is take your little base that we've cut out, like so. And I pop this down. I'll do it in your direction. Line it up with one end. Get my cutters. So I'm holding it tight. Get my cutters. Use it as a guide. Have you got that? Cut it off. Job done. 
like I've said before when using these colors they're extremely sharp be careful okay line it up that looks pretty good I'm gonna just trim a tiny wee bit off because it's just poking off the edge because when you go to put these hedges together and stuff we don't want the base of it sticking out too far and stuff right next step is you take this and because we're using a self-adhesive tile, you would think, oh, I'll just peel this up and stick it down. If I can get the peely edge. I can't get the peely edge on that one. Hold on. Let me have a go at it. Where are the peely edges going, Justin? Give it here. I have nails. <laughs> I have nails. Give it here. I have nails. There you go. Okay. You would think it's just a matter of peeling it up and sticking it down, but we find this does not stick to it very well. So I have a bit of sandpaper first step. See the way it's sort of a glossy, non-stick sort of rubbery surface. First step I'm thinking is, let's take that off. Okay, so that's most of it off. Right, and then before we stick this onto this, we're going to do a bit of remodeling because that's quite that's quite a straight hedge, which is kind of cool though. But we can then take the shears, the big scissors, and we can do stuff like this. Be careful with your fingers, and because it's not stuck to the thing, it's much easier to bend it up into shapes like that. And you just work your way all the way down the hedge, being careful of your fingers, because what we're trying to do is get a hedge that undulates and 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 sort of weaves about and stuff like that so when we're finished it doesn't just look poof, too straight because these are not these are not trimmed hedges this is natural sort of growth along the roads and stuff so we're trying to have layers that are higher than other bits and layers that go in so you can see that I'm sort of carving in towards the, the middle a bit here and there like so I should have a bucket under me I do have a tub be, be smart, use a tub. There we go, let's hear it. Right, that's it, pretty much done. Roughed it up. I'll stop moving it around so you can see it. Right, now all we do is get some super glue. Just peel that off. Oh. Justin! God damn it! <laughs> Justin can fix it. While he's doing that, let's do it. Put a strip of super glue up either end. Is this not cut? Hold up. We'll be now in a sec. There we go. Alright, just a quick one. Yeah. For anybody peeling this stuff off at home. The best way to peel this is just wriggle it left and right. Okay. okay. Yep, got it. Right, just gonna run a strip of this, a bead of this. Right up one side. That's pretty much it. Just to aid with the stickiness. You know, it is self-adhesive, but I found earlier when I was making some prototypes that it kind of just came off again, so I'm going to do that. I do not want covered in grass. Take it. Line it up. Pop it down. All right, you'll get a bit of wiggle time. See how it slides about. So you want to go down the entire length of it. Just sort of centering it so you've got about 5 mil either side. So although we cut the tile into a strip that this what is this is this wide, you'll want to cut well it's a bit two centimeter strip of the carpet tile if you're doing this of um, not carpet tile. What is it? This Doormat. Is Doormat. Oh, right. Yeah. So hang on. The actual strip here, the doormat you're on about, is two centimeters, saying? Yeah, it's about two centimeters. All right, and what would be the measure on the other, just well, in case someone gets a different size of measuring stick from us? A, f a steel ruler's worth. <laughs> I, I don't think it matters that much because you can just make it whatever you've got. All right, you make it 30. 30 what? Mil. 30 mil, right. Three centimeters, and that's about, actually there's about one and a half centimeters there. Okay? Yeah. Long story short, you end up with about, I don't know, about eight mil along the yeah. sides. See it's that? enough for you to get some extra material down there. Right, pop that down. Make sure it's good and squishy. Right, next step. I want to start building this edge up. Take your glue again. Come down, just drop a bead. 
right along here. This will also help stick the front door mat to the carpet tile to that side. And this will also start building up what looks like a, a rocky edge because the package stuff, I've probably said it a few times now, is basically stones and stuff that farmers have been digging out of their fields for hundreds of years and chucking them over to the edge. Right, then we get some sand. Come on over here, John. Just go in along that edge. Like so, you got it? Like that. That's one side done. Another handful of sand. In along that edge. Like so. Job's a good one. Right, take your glue again. Repeat. Down that edge. So you're building up a bit of a slope because there's sort of an embankment thing where all the stones and things have been chucked. That's why that's why the guys in the tanks and stuff didn't like this stuff. Because you couldn't drive a tank over it, could you, John? No. Because it just wrecked the stuff because it just hit a big, basically, a big wall. Well, it was nine foot high. Nine foot high? Yeah. Okay. And with the sand, do it again. And with the sand, do it again. All right, now if you're batching this, I would set that to the side for a little bit. And then you put, come on, put a little bit more sand. So you let that dry, but then you have this edge here that you don't want. See that sort of, that tile edge? Come back your super glue again. And run a bead right along that edge, like so. Don't worry if it flows down onto the other thing, that's fine too. I'll go about halfway, and I'll come back. And that sorts the edge. Do that all around until you've all the edges done. And that way when you set it down, you've got a sort of a dirt track edge. See that? Rather than this sort of tile edge. Otherwise you're gonna end up thinking, oh, I have to paint and stuff. Right, so, by the power of, my, of TV and Blue Peter, here's one I've done before. So I've been all around it, even on the sides here, get those sides done. So it's been around a couple of times. Next step is we want to get all the stones and stuff onto it that actually builds up for the cache. So we had a big box of, it was a sort of black looking cork that was flying around the office. And then I thought, oh, that'll do. So I used some of that and then I thought after I'd done the prototype, I thought, hmm, best lighten that up a bit. So I hit that with some sprays, similar to what we're doing with all the sand and stuff. So as to get stuff that looked sort of similar to the roads and stuff. So I was hitting it with, um, uh, desert yellow, which is what the fellas have been using for all the basing, all the base coats for the buildings and stuff. And then give it a good old dusting of, um, what was it, skeleton bone. Just a combination of that a few times. Brought it up to that. Right. Blue, as I keep chucking them around me. Hopefully there's enough of this. Come back in, repeat the same process you've done before. Dropping in glue like that. I think I'm gonna run out, Justin. Can you cut another one for me? I'll just move over. So come on over this way, John. Get it in there. I'm gonna order a lot of super glue. I'm gonna to have to get a big one. You know that I can get big ones online. I'm gonna to have to do that. Yep. Thanks, and Justin. Everywhere. Thanks, Justin. There we go. Right, now you can really see it, yeah? On the camera, put it down like that. Come on over here, get a handful, drop it along like this. Job's a good one. Right. Now what I like to do just to make sure and try and catch it is do it again. Now if you had lots of time, you could do this with PVM and whatnot, but we're trying to rock through this real quick. So to deal with these rocks, we're just gonna rock this super glue. See what I'm doing? Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just let that sort of sit in for a minute. I'm going to go back to the sand. Would you like more sand? Got a handful, but we got enough. You coming in close? Go back down that again. Like that, and there's an important order you do this in. You take care of all the spacing with sand and, and rocks and stuff first before you do anything with the actual top. You know, because we're going to do some stuff now to make that look bushier. Right? Do that all round, and that way you get a combination of you know, stones 
and sand material and I kind of like to just push it in and anywhere you're thinking oh that's a bit gappy like there's it doesn't look very stony you can just do that again and come on over bring it on over to the stones and do that and if you really want to shove it in you've got loads of stones like this just do that all right and then shake off anything that's not going to stay that stuff that's all stuck to the bush obviously isn't going to stay Right, there we go. Do that all round. And I have done that. As if by magic, I was prepared. So here we go. There's one that's had all the sanding stuff done. Can you see that? I'll put it down, you'll probably get a better focus. So the next step is to try and make the actual hedges look more hedgy, okay? So to do that, we're gonna use some PVA. Right, so we got some really cool stuff from the Army Fader. Not the Army no, Fader, foreground. foreground. So they do this stuff here that just put out. And it's thicker than normal PVA, isn't it? Yeah, just ever so slightly. So it dries quicker as well. Yeah, it actually takes a whole lot better. If you're doing any of their kits, I definitely recommend using this stuff. Yeah. All right, you ready, this, Light? This bit's easy. So easy. This is the messy bit. Get a brush, put it on like that. Not gonna be too well done. Careful, you're hitting your road. Oh, no, the road. Let's bring over this set. Making our way right across the top like that. Like so. And I'm really kind of pushing it down in there. I'm gonna get a bit on the edge there. And I don't mind doing that a couple of times. And the great thing is, because we're using um, doormats and things that we've cut up and sprayed, any of the cut points just look like dried out sort of bits of hedges and anything that comes through that's still green just looks like grass growing up amongst it and stuff so it's very forgiving but you could skip the whole spraying step and just and just use carpet tiles that you've cut up or you could use some other material but i like the carpet tile because when you cut through it like we did a little while ago you get that sort of effect and it just looks like dried up um not more branches and twigs and things like that. And if you do a cut, all you then do is see along here, just drop on a bead of super glue again. Come back over to your sand. Put it down and you're, and you're pretty much ready to go. Yeah, I'll put a little bit more on here, Justin. While I do that, we have a big tub prepared of a whole load of plump foliage. It's like that, it's like the small ground up stuff. This is what it is. It's from the guys at Foreground again. It's their loose foliage. Uh, yep. Well, this is meadow green, and we've got like three types in here just to give us this nice mixed effect. We do. We have a we have meadow green. Yeah. We have. I've got the tubs here. Yeah. We've got meadow green, woodland green, and heartland. Yeah, something like that. But it doesn't really matter where you get it from. We were just fortunate enough to have big bags of that stuff from foreground. Yeah. So it's all mixed together. Right, we're gonna have this for a little while. This is the bit that I like. I so got get yourself it. a big tub like that. Take this and go Bleh! And just shove it in like that because that'll force it down onto the glue. And then you bring it up and tap off like so. And look at that. Look at the instant transformation. Instant buckage. Look at that. Put that down. Look. Brilliant. Right. Now there's a couple other steps you can do. Because as John says, this stuff could get like nine feet high. What you can do is you can let that dry for a bit. You can come along and do that again. Right? But let it dry otherwise it's just going to start. Well, I'll do it and you can see well, the problem. Here. You've got a dry bit here. You can see the problem. If I do that, see the way it's just coming up and sticking to my brush. So let it dry for a bit. Like Justin says, we have a dry bit here. So if you let it dry for a bit, you can come along, put a new blob back on the top, like that. Go back to your tub, in you go again. Shake it off. Give that a good old tap. And hey presto, you're starting to gain that height. And we're starting to break up the shape. You know, we don't want it See the way that's kind of flat? We don't want that. So what we're trying to do is get something that's a bit more like this. Can you see that on camera okay? Right, so another thing you can do is instead of waiting for the PVA 
to dry, you can go back to the super glue. Now, when you use super glue on this material, I need a, I need a new one. See if we can get some more cut there, please, Justin. It kind of goes hard, so you want to do it a, a sort of a step at a time. Dump that in. Come back over. I'm gonna hit the same area again. Right one. I'm gonna dump that in. I'm gonna move further along. Like that, I'm gonna dump that in. I'm gonna hit that one again, because every time we hit it, I'm gonna do a few bits and pieces here. We're gonna start building up layers. And when we build up layers, we go up levels. Right, here we go, look. Hope you can see that, You're starting to get some humps. Right, and the more humps we get, the better. So let's do that. Get a few bits in here. Now it can get a bit brittle when you use super glue. It kind of gets hard and crispy and if you start running your fingers over it, you know, it can start breaking off. Yeah. But I don't anticipate any of us running along going No. Like that. So if you have the time, you can do it with a PDA. But you know, it works fine with super glue. But it's kind of just a, do you want to finger that John? So you see what that feels like? It's just a hard lump, isn't it? But it does a great job. That's a new one. In elevating the height. And then you don't have to do it everywhere. You can just do it in bits and pieces as you go along. And then because you've done it, you're starting to raise the height of the whole hedgerow. Even though there are blank bits in it, you get that you get that impression of a big, tall, massive edge. You get edge. that natural weave that you see in hedgerows. Yeah, but you add, that, you add that extra height to it without having to use too much more flock. Yeah. There you go, look at that. Isn't that sweet? Put that down beside the stuff we've done. There are tanks. And I think that's excellent. Good job. That'll be sweet on the table. Yeah. Now we just have to mill out every last bit of it we can. Let's see what that looks like quickly from the other side. I'll do both sides of the road. Well, oh, we could do both sides, so yep. And pop your tank in there. And there you go, your tank. And that's the effect we're and at. Now we're in Normandy. You can barely see him. So you see when he drives over to that bit? That's it, because the bocage things really are. It's something that blocks line of sight and stuff in Flames of War, isn't it? Mm. So what I would say is, even if you can see over it, that whole thing's area terrain then at that point, because it's on a base, it's very easy to go, that's bocage, yep. you can't see over it, you can't drive over it. Yeah, well, I mean, like, they did have the Collins hedgerow cutters. If you don't have a Collins hedgerow cutter, whatever that is, you can't drive over it. <laughs> it's actually reclaimed uh, tank traps, if I remember right, they were made from. Yeah. Yeah, John, I, if, am I right? I think yep. this is dry enough. Let's take this over and put it down beside this Normandy castle because that's yeah. also been getting worked on today. So let's yeah. have a look. Well, I've been doing some test lights with it. Look at that. Yeah, that works really good. Isn't if we have cool? that along a lot of the roads, it'll be sweet. Oh, that's just excellent. Right, before we have a look at the castle, Justin, you've been printing out loads more terrain. Yeah, I think I can now officially say I have printed at least part of Western France. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've got at least three or four villages worth that we've just been running out and I'm running out even more at the minute for a more urban area to do some ruins and stuff. Yeah. But that's basically it at stage one after it gets primed after it comes off the printer. This is actually at stage three where it's actually had dry brush and wash. Yeah. And I do quite like how this looks. So stop playing with my walls because I have a specific way my walls go. Okay. Because I want to make sure that whenever I put my walls down, we leave gaps and things for people to drive and play through and that they don't just get bogged down. So you're um, experimenting with the layout of this big fortressy castle then? Yeah, I'm trying to do something kind of cool that people can just have a play with. And then, you know, just drive through, have some stuff. I want to add some stuff inside here just because it's very bare. This bit here. Mm. But this is the bit Warren's talking about. If we put tents and things like that in there to make it look like a German encampment. Yeah, it looks like it's just been somewhere that they've entrenched because there are some defences around them. Yeah, it's like they've had a great idea. I have a great idea! Let's retake let's, the old castles. Let's build our camp inside the castle because that wouldn't be obvious. But that's not going to stick out on, on airplanes flying over. Go, oh, look, at all, look at all those ten, tents well, in that castle. Well, hang on, hang on. There it, shouldn't be any Germans in there. Uh, hang on, hang on, <laughs> hang on. Is it any less flash than taking over all of the pretty French chateaus? No. Because let's be honest, French chateaus were used to death for command because commanders, they like their comforts. Hey, I don't want to knock it too hard. I like the idea of, yeah. of storming the castle. Well, Literally, see, we're going to do Wolfenstein. 
<laughs> without all of the uh, the weird tacky Nazi stuff. Oh yeah, without that. Because Warren has gone off his pulpy pulpiness <laughs> for his knack for Has he? Yeah, yeah. He's doing proper historical this time, as far as I know. Wow. Right, it's it's almost time to open up in here. Yeah. And there's gaming and stuff on this evening. If you have pan around, Jono's been busy, Justin's been busy. We're all getting gaming tables and stuff up, ready for the weekend. Yeah. And I will say, if you're a site member and you're in the local area, don't be shy, come in, say hello, we'll give you a quick tour around the place. More than happy to. Right, so that's it for Bootcamp Blogs for this week. Yes. Make sure in about, it's about two weeks from now because we've got UK Games Expo, there'll be, there'll be some more vlogs. Yeah. we got UK Games Expo and we leave to go to that next week. Tuesday. Tuesday. We start, yeah, it's us in the Beastmobile. <laughs> yeah, and then we arrive back about a week later and then there's two days yeah. and then it's boot camp. Yeah. So in a couple of weeks time, tune in to ontabletop.com for your chance to watch all of the boot camp stuff that we get up to and we're going to have three amazing bundles up for prizes as well. Well, we, we have prizes for everybody watching at home, prizes for people coming to the event, but yeah, this is one you're not going to want to miss the content for. Yeah, so until next week, keep on gaming. <laughs>